We asked that the question to the former president today. Harris Faulkner had a, a town hall, and this is how he responded. I heard about that. They, they were saying I was, like, threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. They're the ones doing the threatening. They do phony investigations. I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. He was the greatest oh gangster. No, it's right. true. We've no, but think question. of it. It's called weaponization of government. It's a terrible thing. So, Brett, I, I'm sorry, and with all due respect, that clip was not what he has been saying about the enemy within that he has repeated when he's speaking about the American people. That's not what you just showed. Well, he was asked no, about that no, specific... No, 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 that's not what you just showed in all no, fairness no, no. and respect you to you. I'm telling you that was the question that we asked him. Uh, you didn't show that, and here's the bottom line. He has repeated it many times, and you and I both know that. And you and I both know that he has talked about turning the American military on the American people. He has talked about going after people who are engaged in peaceful protest. He has talked about locking people up because they disagree agree with him. This is a democracy. And in, in a democracy, the President of the United States, in the United States of America, should be willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. And this is what is at stake, which is why you have someone like the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying what Mark Milley has said about Donald Trump being a threat to the United States of America. Brett Baer might have been under more pressure in his interview with VP Harris than she was. He had to carry their misleading narratives and hope to please the former president at the same time. But he didn't expect Harris to apply even more pressure over it. We have two enemies. We have the outside enemy, and then we have the enemy from within. And the enemy from within, in my opinion, is more dangerous than China, Russia, and all these countries. The thing that's tougher to handle are these lunatics that we have inside, like Adam Schiff, Adam Shifty Schiff. Think of this guy's going to be a senator. Adam Shifty Schiff, who's a total sleazebag, is going to become a senator. But I call him the enemy from within. I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within, not even the people that have come in and destroying our country. By the way, totally destroying our country. I think the bigger problem are the people from within. We have some very bad people. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. And I think they're the and, and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by National Guard or, if really necessary, by the military. You know, the worst thing about Fox trying to sanitize Trump's drumbeat of fascism in front of Harris is that they didn't even have to go back a week to that exchange because he said it again in that women's town hall that Brett Baer was referencing. You know what they are? They're a party of sound bites. They're. Some, somebody asked me. Can they be brought together? You know, it was very, I never thought really, I wasn't thinking like they could because they are, they're very, very different. And it is the enemy from within and they're very dangerous. They're Marxists and communists and fascists and they're sick. I use a guy like Adam Schiff because they made up the Russia, Russia, Russia hooks. It took two years to solve the problem. Absolutely nothing was done wrong, et cetera, et cetera. They're dangerous for our country. We have China, we have Russia, we have all these countries. If you have a smart president, they can all be handled. The more difficult are, the, you know, the Pelosi's, uh, these people, they're so sick and they're so evil. Either producers didn't think Harris knew that he talks about using the military to round up his political opponents, or they didn't think that she'd point that out. I guess when all you usually have to do is manipulate the facts and move on, you forget that some folks can easily see through it. That theme was seen when the conversation went to MAGA's fear-mongering over care for trans prisoners. This particular one from the Trump campaign has gotten a lot of attention. Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, for prisoners. For prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. So... Are you still in support of using taxpayer dollars to help prison inmates or detained illegal aliens to transition to another gender? I will follow the law. And it's a law that Donald Trump actually followed. Um, you're probably familiar with, now it's a public report, that under Donald Trump's administration, these uh, surgeries were available to, on a medical necess necessity basis, to people in the federal prison system. And I think, frankly, that ad from the Trump campaign is a little bit of like throwing 
you know, stones when you're living in a glass house. The Trump aides say that he never advocated for that prison policy and no gender transition well, surgeries happened during his Well, you know what, you've got to take responsible his, for what happened presidency. in your administration. Yeah, no surgeries happened in his preg- it's, presidency. It's in so black and white. would you still advocate for using taxpayer dollars for gender reassignment surgeries? I will surgeries? follow the law, just as I, I, I think Donald Trump as, would say he did. You would have a say as president. You know, I do wish he didn't allow any room there for people to think that providing this kind of care for prisoners is abhorrent and that she just followed the law without really wanting to. But it was probably eye-opening for Fox viewers to hear that the policy existed under Trump as well, highlighting that his anti-trans rhetoric is simply to stoke the hatred that he needs to gain their support. He spent $20 million on those ads trying to create a sense of fear in the voters because he actually has no plan in this election that is about focusing on the needs of the American people. Whereas, at $20 million on that ad, on an issue that, as it relates to the biggest issues that affect the American people, is really quite remote. And again, his policy was no different. Look at where we are, though. They on say plans for the American we'll people, I'm offering a plan to deal with affordable housing. I'm offering a plan to deal with what we need to do to strengthen small businesses, which are the backbone of America's economy. I am offering a plan that is about taking care of young parents and giving them the support they need. My plans for the economy will strengthen the economy, as have been reviewed by 16 Nobel laureates, uh, Goldman Sachs, Moody's, and recently the Wall Street Journal, which have all studied our plans and have indicated my plans for our economy would strengthen our economy. His would make them weaker, Why do you would think ignite more inflation say... and invite a recession by the middle of next year. You know, it was almost like a second debate between Trump and Harris, with Bayer having to deliver Trump's points, not realizing that she was expecting the pushback. That. If that's the case, why is half the country supporting him? Why is he beating you in a lot of swing states? Why, if he's as bad as you say, that half of this country is now supporting this person who could be the 47th president of the United States? Why is that happening? This is an election for president of the United States. It's not supposed to be easy. I know, but it's if not it's supposed as... to be. It, 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 it is not supposed to be a so cakewalk for So are they misguided, the 50 percent? Are they me, stupid? What, oh, what God, is it? I would never say that about the American people. And in fact, if you listen to Donald Trump, if you watch any of his rallies, he's the one who tends to demean and belittle and diminish the American people. He's the one who talks about an enemy within, within an enemy within, talking about the American people. While headhunting for another deplorables line again, Bayer didn't think far enough ahead to realize that Trump makes insulting both his voters and hers a standard part of his pitch. You'd literally have to ignore everything he says to not know that he attacks anyone that doesn't agree with him. Have they not heard him reprimand Jewish folks to women voters about their getting their heads examined or something? It's hard to be outraged by offensive language when they celebrate not being politically correct when Trump tears into a bigoted tirade. And his own running mate called him America's Hitler. Your campaign slogan is a new way forward, and it's time to turn the page. You've been vice president for three and a half years. So what are you turning the page from? Well, first of all, turning the page from the last decade in which we have been burdened with the kind of rhetoric coming from Donald Trump that has been designed and implemented to divide our country and have Americans literally point fingers at each other. Rhetoric and an approach to leadership that suggests that the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down instead of what we all know. The strength of leadership is based on who you lift up. You, the strength Madam of an Vice American president. president, which is one who understands that the vast majority of us have more in common than what separates us. Madam that Vice is President, more than 70 percent of people That is about pollsters. turning the page on rhetoric that people are frankly exhausted of, Brett. More than 70 percent of people. It seemed like every time she illustrated that the proposed outrage over things like her campaign slogan were based in nonsense, he felt he had to interrupt to avoid Trump's truth social wrath. And it turns out he was pretty successful. Great job by Brett Baer in his interview with Lion Kamala Harris. She has a massive and irredeemable case of Trump derangement syndrome. So bad, in fact, that she barely able to talk about any subject other than the man who had the best economy ever, the strongest border in history, and who just got the unanimous endorsement of the U.S. Border Patrol, me. Their endorsement was a tremendous honor. They said that Comrade Kamala did a terrible job, the absolute worst in memory, and can't be allowed to do it again. 
She's also the worst vice president in history, but hopefully and soon be gone. Again, congratulations to Brett Baer on a tough but very fair interview, one that clearly showed how totally incompetent Kamala is. For the good of our nation, her inferior cognitive ability must be tested at once. So congrats to Brett Baer. He got himself out of the doghouse with Trump after he and Martha McCollum challenged him on Harris's quick jump in popularity. I'm still not sure how much headway the vice president made in this appearance on Fox News, though, other than to show that she handles interviews focused on what her opponent sees as negatives much better than he does. I think this strategy from Harris was a Google strategy. She wanted Fox viewers to start to Google some of the things she was saying because some of the comments she was making in this interview are foreign to the Fox audience. For example, General Mark Milley saying Trump is a fascist to the core, that's barely been covered on Fox News. So she was able to get some of those talking mm -hmm. points in. This was the most adversarial interview Kamala Harris has probably ever done. Instead of getting to debate Trump again, she got to debate Brett Baer. And a lot of viewers are gonna come away saying, wow, she's willing to do that. That's a sign of toughness and strength.